Hello, I am Mudita, and welcome back to Satisfactory. In the last video, I turned 135 crude oil into 405 rubber using the recycled rubber and plastic all recipes. Today, I am finally going to get my home base started. The reason this video is a day late is because there was a lot of busy work to do. By the end, I'll use 1200 limestone and use some of that rubber I just made and turn it into 1080 concrete. It is getting really close to that time we start deleting. Ooh, it's exciting for me. And if we take a look at our power, got a nice steady power graph. Ah, love seeing that. So first things first, I have added a huge platform. So this is where we're going to do the bulk of the main factory here. I raised it quite a bit off the ground and that's because this is actually going to extend even farther. This is just kind of the start of it. So that will leave a huge area underneath here that's pretty open, but I wanted to be able to place the miners here and not have to work around it on the main floor. I'd much rather that just be one solid floor and not have to worry about these things. It'll also leave me a lot of space to do any of my load balancing and logistics, getting things from place to place, although I do have a plan for a lot of the logistics on the main floor, but having some extra space to do this just is never going to hurt. The other thing I've done is I've marked out the center point of where I want the storage to go, and this is kind of the focal point. I kind of wanted to be able to come out here and it's going to empty out into the waterfall. So eventually this will probably go much higher than all of this so i thought this would be kind of cool so i went ahead and added this section right here so i just kind of made a curve that went all the way around and so i just wanted to leave the waterfall open because it's just such a cool feature i'm gonna build into some of the rocks but some of them i want to be able to just leave open so this is where i want the storage to kind of empty out so that i can see my cool waterfall in my backyard and this is where we'll have the storage and then we'll have probably more of the machines on this side but some machines are going to go on this side and we're just going to take over just a huge amount of the desert here now that i've got the materials let me show you how some of these are going to go in so i'm not sure if i want these to go all the way to the edge probably not so let's just start here let's just delete these all right, so we start with storage one. So I'm very creative with my naming conventions. And let's get this lined up right there. All right, so this just has the floor built in because I wanted the conveyor belt to be able to show off what's in the container. So we can just go ahead and place it. So I've got a big metal pillar right down the middle and that way I can change both the picture and the amount that's going into the storage just so it gives me a little bit more information. I've also got a street light clipped in right there that's just coming through right on the back and you'll be able to just barely see it back here. And then these are connected and then you'll just connect each of the blueprints together. But that way I can have this hallway really well lit. It's got a second storage right here with a little bit more of a gap because now if I take the second one and now I can put it into blueprint mode, make sure that the arrows are facing the right way. You can snap that in there. And now it has an additional two industrial storage containers as a buffer. So the plan is, I removed them in the blueprint, if you saw my original making of these. Originally I had some storage containers as placeholders, but I realized with these they're not quite the same, and when you hold control they're just going to snap to each other, it's not like mergers or splitters where you can replace one with the other. So I just deleted them all. I left the floor holes, I can just delete the ones that I don't need because I'm sure not every single item I'm going to want to upload to a dimensional depot. But this is basically the plan, is I'll be able to put one of these up here for each item that I want uploaded. And then with this up here, right now I only have a limit of 60 per minute, so really Mark 1 is fine, but I'll probably use whatever fastest belt because I do just want these to upload as quick as possible. And then we just go down here, we delete this belt, and we hook it to this container. So I'll always have one backup container of any of the items. 
And then for most items, I'll have three industrial storage containers as a buffer leading into my dimensional depot. So even if I'm making something really little, like two computers a minute, I'll still be able to get that max upload speed to my dimensional depot. And now because this is a blueprint, I can really easily just snap all of these together. And very quickly, I'll have the outline of my storage. And don't worry about that flickering at the top because this is gonna be a mirrored setup where I have a second set going the opposite direction. And that's gonna hide all that Z fighting up there. In fact, I'll probably run a row of signs down the middle to give it a little bit more lighting down here. Especially with the coated concrete, I really like the way the signs and the lights bounce off of it. So in this first bit of the video, I am going to be skipping just hours and hours of stuff. Mainly because I don't think it's all that interesting, and I'd really like to get to some factory building. So let's do a little time skip, and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, I also added a hallway, so let's take a look. Hypertubes make this a little bit easier. So this is one huge blueprint starting from down here. So it takes up the whole space of a Mark I blueprint designer. So it's eight walls tall. And this is how I'm gonna run a lot of the resources around the factory is this huge space down here. And then I've got an equal space up here to be able to walk around and it's still nice and spacious. I'll be able to see all the things moving around in my factories and I'll be able to see all the things moving from section to section. And then we've got this. I need to redo this part. I don't want a beam right there, but it still has some work to do. But this is probably longer than I need it to be. But I would much rather have too much than realize that I don't have enough space and then not really have a place to put it because I'm just going to build around it. So adding that hallway made me realize that I needed to bring this up for foundation. So I deleted those and replaced it up here so that it connects to the hallway. So the plan is we're just going to keep kind of extending this out. And then I'll have different rooms for the factory kind of branch off of it. So I'll have a wall right here that'll kind of split off the back end of the storage to whatever process this is going to be. I'm going to extend this out and there's going to be more production over here. And then we'll go up afterwards. So my thinking for the layout right now is this bottom floor right here is going to be for all of the smelting and whatnot we'll probably even have refineries for some of the things and then we'll kind of get more complicated as we go up so somewhere i'll have to make a kind of like an elevator to get a bunch of the items from this floor up to the next one and whatnot but i've got a ways to go for that so like i mentioned i really like to plan out the factories so that i have a good idea of all of the things that i need and when I started to add it all up, I realized I needed almost every bit of the limestone out here. So if I was going to go around and grab all of the limestone, I figured I might as well just grab everything. And then I have it available. It's a whole lot more work right now. But in the future, I won't need to go grab anything else. And with some of the very end game items, machines, and recipes, really just about any ore could be useful. So I might as well just grab it all. So this is going to be another section where I just skip ahead because I don't think it's the most exciting to watch me lay out just tons and tons of belt buses, but let me show you how I did it. So I've got my dual belt bus blueprint right here, but I don't want to connect it right here because I'm not sure if I need to do some load balancing as soon as I bring things in, which I'm pretty sure is going to be the case with at least one thing. So I'm going to have them come in below the main floor and that way I can deal with any of that and then we'll send them up to where they need to go. So I could extend some foundations a little bit lower so I could snap to that or I can just place one temporary one right here, go to blueprint mode, swap it over, I can place them now and then I can just delete that very first one. And chances are this floor is gonna get extended anyway so I'm probably gonna delete a number of these first ones. But just to get it going, this is basically what I do is we just kind of stretch this out and I'll come back and add some supports so that it's not just a weird floating tunnel across the desert. The rifle really does make that easy. All right, so let me show you the rest of it. 
All right, so we grab ourselves some foundations. I'll go out for this way. Let's see. Yep. Okay, and the trick that I learned is place the miner first. Because I can put the blueprint housing thing over it really easily. All right, and this is a great one. So this one comes just like right to the edge. So this is perfect because that'll give me kind of the most space to work with. So I can delete that one. We'll add it to the front here. All right, and then I'm gonna grab this blueprint and let's just go ahead and nudge it into place. Perfect, all right. I can then come inside and I'm gonna go ahead and just overclock everything to begin with. Now on the purers, I'll only overclock it to 480 because that's the best belts I have. But for a normal, we'll do the full 300. I went ahead and added just a large, I mean small billboard to the front of all of these. And then I can just change the information just so I can kind of see from the outside what it is. So it's a normal node and we're getting 300 out of it. That's what it's clocked to. And then with this, this is more or less just a placeholder for a lot of these factories. I'm going to end up having it, you know, come out in a different spot, you know, wherever is the most useful. And same with the door. I can kind of swap that around. It's real simple, but with the windows, you still get a good view of the actual miner. And it won't just be a whole bunch of miners just kind of all by themselves. I think when the whole desert is completely filled with these, I think this will look nicer than this. But that's just me. Obviously, this is a whole lot more materials and work just for it to look slightly different. So you definitely don't need to. It sure does add a lot. But the way that I'm actually going to do the belt work is I'm going to extend this all the way out and I'm going to kind of work my way back. So the ones that are going the farthest are going to be the ones that are on the bottom. So this one, since it's closest to the factory, is actually going to be probably one of these top ones right here. But like I said, I don't think doing this would be the most exciting part and I don't want to make a video of just me doing a whole bunch of belt work so let me skip ahead to how far I've progressed on this so far ah, so many buses I'm sure some of you hate to see this I think it's great and the nighttime in the desert is pretty cool but I have to say I am so happy we have mods back because now it's daylight a little bit easier to see. All right, so I have two buses. I haven't collected everything since this is probably gonna come out past this miner. I'm probably gonna do that one a little bit different. But for a lot of these, I still need to do one more belt bus back there to collect, I don't know, there's probably like eight or 10 more nodes that are just kind of on the edge of the desert that I haven't grabbed yet. I didn't think it would look good to bring those all the way over. And I don't think there was actually enough space in here. Same with the other end of the desert. I'm using so many of these resources already, but I'll need to create one more to kind of run this way and it'll collect all of these last ones that I'm already using. So that one will kind of go in last. Since I'm still using so many of the resources that are coming out of that temporary factory, I don't want to delete it quite yet. But this is how it kind of came together. So with each of these, I just kind of figured out a way to get the lift to kind of go up and then go into the height that it needs to go to. So I do still need to come back and add all of the pillars. I haven't done the supports quite yet. I just kind of wanted to get all of this together. Since I kept kind of changing the way things were, I didn't want to add all the pillars and then having to keep deleting them and re-adding them. So now I think it's basically set to where I want it. I've got power running down the bottom, so instead of having a whole bunch of power towers everywhere, I thought I could hide a lot of the power this way. And since I've got these things running everywhere, it should be really easy to branch off the power into each one of these to power the miners. But none of them are powered on yet. I didn't see the point in that. So with that side, I got to just run in a straight line all the way back. This side ran into some features that I needed to go up just a little bit so it was easier just to go up here and then go out and collect the rest of these but still I think it gives it a really cool look bringing everything together it would have been much more efficient to use trains or maybe trucks I mean in a perfect world I would have created just a whole bunch of roads and just had like 50 different trucks running around grabbing all of the resources 
but it's not a perfect world. I've tried that, and it works great for a while. Eventually, it just gave me too many headaches that I just did not want to do it again until things really change with vehicles. Using a couple here and there are great, but trying to collect all the resources in an area with trucks is a challenge. But so far, that's what we've got. We've got the bulk of the resources all belted together going into a completely empty platform. So a whole bunch of the iron and the limestone will get used right away. A whole bunch of this is going to be probably not turned on for quite a bit. And that's okay. Well, I've got a platform. And I think this is where I'm going to put my first train station. I was finally smart enough to use those Mercer spheres to just add dimensional depots to all of this temporary storage. <laughs> so it looks awful and it just makes me want to delete this more. But now I have all of these basic items in my dimensional depot, which definitely does help. Even if it's only 60 minute, it adds up. So the first thing we need to do, we need to unlock this bad boy. So what am I missing here? Oh, a bunch. And more encased industrial beams. Oh yeah, thankfully I uploaded those. Okay, solves that problem. There we go, time for trains. So due to popular demand, I have added a motivational message. Choo-choo mother <laughs> Choo-choo. Oh, that's good. If you saw my recent train blueprint guide video, I mentioned at the end that I am probably not even going to unlock this. So, we're just not going to. Mainly just to prove a point. Alright, so if you haven't figured it out, I am just going to use push-pull trains. So instead of having intersections and just main highways that a whole bunch of trains are using, this is going to take a bit more work, a bit more resources, but it is extremely reliable. Alright, so I'm definitely going to move this, don't worry about that, but this is where the train is going to go. So I think the very first one is going to go right around here. So it'll be something like this. So normally with the train station, you would then go to freight platform. You would put as many as you need here, which is more or less what I'm going to do. But the thing you have to remember, let's see, how many is this? There's seven. All right, so I actually want eight, which actually means I'm going to need to place nine. And the reason for that is as a general rule of thumb, for every four freight platforms, so for every four freight cars, you need one locomotive. So if I'm gonna have eight freight cars, I'm gonna need two locomotives to be able to pull it at a normal rate and be able to get up any of the ramps at you know a reasonable speed. Since this is a push-pull and I don't have to worry about traffic, I could probably push this to one locomotive for every five freight cars. But this is generally just what I stick with, and it's always worked for me, so I'm just going to stick with it. So, with the push-pull, that means it can go this way fine. But I am actually going to need more space back here. So, they could obviously just overhang on the track, and it really wouldn't matter. But I really like to be able to have my train station include all of the parts of the train. So, I have two spots for the two locomotives on this side and then it's eight freight cars, and then it'll be two locomotives on that side. So I have tested it out, and even though when you're in a locomotive, all right, so if you jump in a locomotive, you can drive forward, you can stop, and I can drive backwards. Now, unfortunately, the train itself can't operate going backwards. You can drive it backwards, but it won't work going backwards, if that makes sense. So the reason why I need two locomotives on each side is because they both need to be facing a different direction. So the way this train will end up looking is it's gonna be two locomotives, a whole bunch of freight cars, and then two locomotives facing the opposite direction because they can only really pull going one way. So for this long of a train, I need two locomotives on either end. 
So there's lots of ways you can do trains. This is just kind of what I've gone with, mainly because of the traffic issues, and this is my brute force way to fix it. And it sounded fun. Unfortunately, laying the train tracks is honestly quite a bit of trial and error of trying to feed it through gaps like this. It's a lot of, you know, you place a couple blueprints, you start the turn, you realize it's going to clip into the wall, so you come back, you delete a blueprint, and then you see if the turn makes it, and you just kind of make some minor adjustments when you're trying to weave through an area like that. So maybe in the future I'll try to do a time lapse of it, but for now, we're just going to skip ahead again. And then we'll take a little train trip out to the Spire Coast. And now there's some train tracks going all the way out there. So before we head out there, this is kind of what I'm thinking for my train station. I'm planning on having three next to each other, and then we'll just add more up top if we need more. So I'm just separating them with half foundation, and then I just kind of, I wanted to leave a gap open so that I could kind of walk in between the layers. And then I'm going to probably add some catwalk right here in the front to connect them all so that you could actually get from train to train. Because if you do run catwalks across here, the trains will go right under it. That's really cool. So probably split them up something like this. Not quite sure that may may change, but just need a little bit of space for my buffer. Um, but this also may change. But my thinking is I want this part to be somewhat minimal. And then I'm going to have another section uh, maybe out here in the front or maybe off here to the side because all of this is going to get deleted. So I might use this space over here to do any of the load balancing that needs to be done. Because if you didn't see my last playthrough, one thing I like to do with trains is because they unload all of their goods all at once. I like to still load balance the amount. So if I'm only bringing in 200, I've obviously got to use a Mark III belt out of here. But that means I'm going to get 270 for an amount of time and then it's not going to have anything or you have it backed up enough that it's going to do the stop and start stuttering thing because it's trying to move 270 but you're only using 200. So I like to load balance it so that you only have the 200 on the belt. But for that sometimes you need a little bit of space so, and I don't necessarily want to do it right next to the train so I'm probably going to do it off to the side somewhere but we'll figure that out once we actually have products to load balance. Everything up until now I actually recorded before last week's video. And this is where I would take you on a train ride out there. And that's kind of where last week's video started. So instead, I'm going to skip ahead about 12, 13 hours because that's how long that factory took to build. And we'll take a quick train ride out there to see what it looks like now that it's all finished. Now that I have plans to use this rail line real soon, I went ahead and added the second one, which I'll use for my personal use for now. to take a real quick tour again. So we've got my little terminal, which still has the sink right now, but this will get deleted soon. So I'm gonna need some of this rubber. I love that you can snap the stairs together this way to create kind of the inside curves. However, I don't know of a way to do outside ones. Like if you wanted them to be this way, I don't know of a way to kind of connect these smoothly. I hope that's something that we get in the future just because it would just be really cool. But if you know of a way, let me know. And it is working away, and we've got the 405 rubber being sunk right now. But by the end of this video, we'll get this train turned on, and I'll have at least the rubber headed back to the home base. Well, that was a fun little detour. Let's get back to work. So the first thing I want to do is get these things load balanced. So the first two freight platforms are going to be for the items going from here out to the Spire Coast. The other ones are going to be coming in from the Spire Coast. So one thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing trains, but especially with push-pull, is that the freight cars are basically going to be the opposite. 
So the la very last freight car over there is going to be the first one over here. So this one right here is going to be my rubber. So I'm going to go ahead and place a lift here. Now one thing with train logistics that you do want to keep in mind. So right here, this is definitely more than fine. I have 405 coming in and these are both 480 belts. These two belts will pause every time a train comes in and does the docking animation. This one right here will never actually have to stop. It's only these two. And since this is a 480 belt and I'm bringing in 405, it should be fine. But one thing I'll keep in mind, but since the trip isn't too far, one thing that I can do to ensure that that's fast enough is when you set up the timetable, I really need to rename these. You can go over to the cog right here and I can tell it to perform one load unload has been completed and then there's the or and then you can change the time. So if there's nothing, it'll still wait here for 15 seconds and then go to the next station. But if I click this, I can switch it to and and then I can change this to however long because the trip isn't really that far for the train to go back and forth unless I'm going to be transporting a lot of items. I have plenty of time for it to complete its round trip. So I can actually have this wait an extra 60 seconds. So that way the freight cars will be a little bit more full. And the amount of time that it's spent doing the loading and unloading animations is a smaller percentage of its total round trip. It's not something you would need to do a lot, but every once in a while, it can really help. So now that we've got this belt set up, let's go down here. So I'm gonna expand this to take up pretty much this whole area down here, I think. This is where I can do any of my load balancing coming off of the train. And then I'll just set up a belt bus that goes from here over to the factory. Let me show you how I like to do this. First thing I'm going to do is bring down a lift. That'll kind of give me the space I know I'm working with. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a merger right next to it. Right there. But this isn't actually where I'm going to hook that one up. But I just wanted the spacing to be there just in case. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my storage container and we're going to place that there. Now I'll grab a lift and I'm going to actually have this one come into the top input. All right, so for with the load balancing, the nice part about working with a storage container and load balancing out of it, as long as you have enough of a buffer built up, which shouldn't take a whole lot, you can count on having a consistent max belt speed. So I know I'm gonna get 480 out of here, meaning working with a smart splitter is pretty easy. So we're gonna do pretty much the same kind of split I did over at the oil factory. I'm splitting off 75 because I've got 480 on this belt, but I only want 405 heading off into the factory because that's the amount that's gonna be consistently headed over here. So I want any to the left overflow straight ahead. So let's go ahead and work with that. Let's grab ourselves a splitter, put it right there on the edge, and we're gonna put a Mark II into there. So I can count on this being 120. And the goal here is we've got 480, but we want 405. So I wanna send 75 back through that merger into there. So there's a couple ways you could do this. This is just what I went with. I'm gonna go ahead and add a merger right here. So. If I split this in half, we've got 60 here and then 60 coming out the other way. I'm going to go ahead and add another splitter. And because I know I'm going to need it, we'll just add one more. On this side, we'll mirror them with mergers. Okay, so we've got 120 into here, we've got 60 there, 60 here. If I split this 60 in half, I've got 30 here, 30 there. I take this 30, I split that in half, there's 15, and there's 15. So I've got my 60 and my 15 coming out of here is 75. And I actually don't need that merger. So we can just grab this, we'll switch it to straight mode, and send it back into there. So this is the great part about the industrial storage containers. The only way this doesn't work is if I let this back up so much that this gets completely full. If it gets completely full, then these two will compete and most likely this is going to back up or this is going to back up. 
So you have plenty of space, but you don't want this to get completely full. And we can go ahead and just lay down more Mark IV. And then out of here, we've got our 405. Since I didn't need to split any of these sections and use two different belt speeds, I could have made this much more compact. But I think I've got plenty of space down here, so hopefully this won't bite me. Because these are going to be spaced out every two foundations, because that's how big each freight platform is. Let's head on over to the factory real quick. Let me run through a couple blueprints real quick. So I'm going to use this one right here. Although instead of just a huge white wall, I think I'm probably going to change it so like there's a stripe of a different color kind of right down the middle. I'm going to use this one right here, and it has the walkway on both sides as kind of my internal wall to partition off the different rooms that I'm going to use. And then I switch to the Mark II Blueprint Designer to make this blueprint. So this one is going to be my outside wall. It's really simple, but I think it'll look pretty good when I tile it across, you know, the whole front of this. So I'll have a bunch of windows that are at catwalk level. So that way, inside each of the rooms that are facing outside, I can at least kind of get a nice view of the desert and all of my glorious belt buses. And I'll be able to connect the catwalks to everything else. Pretty plain and simple. I didn't want to make it too much. Usually when I'm designing these sorts of things, I want to add, you know, something on here that breaks up just the monotony of just a giant concrete wall, you know, with the lights and stuff like that. But I'm not going to add too much. I figure once it's all in place, then I can kind of come back and add a couple more details that maybe I don't want on every single blueprint. And then I have this one. And this one is going to be for the bottom section. So this bottom part of the wall up to this level, I'm going to use this right here. So really simple, but really tileable. Just using small concrete pillars and then the big concrete pillars in the middle to kind of give it a little bit more depth. And then the difference in color, I'm just using the carbon steel finish for these ones and the Katerium finish for the big ones. Because you can change the colors for the concrete pillars, but not the metal ones. So let me burn through a few thousand concrete and I'll show you what I come up with. All right, so what do you think? I like it. So since I used the Mark II blueprint for both of them, they're the same size so that I could keep these kind of lined up, which I like. And then I've just got the belt bus coming in right below. And it was easy with these being pillars to just delete the ones that you don't need. Yeah, they're really flexible. And that's why I wanted them for this bottom section. So this is the under part now. I'm going to use a good portion of this for load balancing and moving the belts around. But there's also just going to be a whole bunch of open space too. I went ahead and added little signs. So now I know what all of these belts are. Because I have a couple of these and being organized makes your life just so much easier. So I'll throw up a screenshot of the spreadsheet. I basically just put this exact same information in a spreadsheet for each one of these belt buses and that way I could keep it all organized and then throw down some side. So when it comes to belting everything around, it's so much easier to be able to look at this and see, okay, this belt is this. There's going to be quite a bit of left open space right now because I'm not sure what I need for everything. I've got it planned up to a certain point, but I didn't want to try to plan out the entire playthrough all at once. But this is kind of how I'm going to separate the rooms. So I've got my little sign right here. So we'll do the raw quartz in here. So I'll have both refineries and assemblers doing quartz crystal and silica over here. And then we've just got the room separated with these right here. So I figured this should be enough space for my copper ingots. I'm going to do refineries and I think I've left myself enough space. The nice thing is with these being blueprints, it's super easy to just delete an entire row and move it over. And then I've just got to adjust some of the catwalks. So if I find out I've made a mistake, hopefully I haven't boxed myself in on either side by then. And then we'll do Caterium. Ah, yes. And this is how I kind of figured I should have enough space. We'll see. The iron ingots. I've placed some machines, but we're going to do that in the next video because I just don't think I have quite enough time to squeeze all of that in. But today I am going to do the concrete. So I have already placed the machines, but it was super simple. So you didn't really miss on much. I just used my three assembler blueprint and there's four of them. 
And because I only needed four, I didn't create a whole nother blueprint. So I did have to go through and change a number of these belts to Mark II, because these are gonna be taking the limestone. And if we, oh, that's right. I was gonna save it for this. So, so the reason I needed to create rubber of all things before I got this whole factory started is this recipe right here. This just looks fun. It has, I think, the best ratio for limestone to concrete, but you do need oil. I don't think that's a ton of oil, to be honest. 20 rubber to make 90 concrete isn't too bad in my opinion. So I'm gonna use 240 rubber, and I'm gonna be able to make over a thousand concrete. So all of these are gonna be using the rubber concrete at 100%. Each one of these sets of three are going to spit out 270 concrete. So for now, I'm just going to have them all go to sinks just to get this all up and running. But then I'm going to come over here and I'm probably going to go one floor up. Because the other side of here, this is all going to look quite a bit different. Probably going to use just tons of floor holes here. Wall holes, I mean. And right here is our storage. So one of those belts is gonna come into here and plug into one of my storage containers and then dimensional depot. And the rest of the concrete's gonna get used for future projects. I went ahead and added a belt bus from the train station over to the factory. I added two of them because why not? I figure I'll start with this inside one. If I end up not needing this entire space, then I'll just delete one because it's a lot easier just to delete one and then patch a hole than it is to have to add one later, in my opinion. And hopefully two's enough. So I ran the belt for the rubber all the way over, so it's just coming over to here. And I have it coming right over to here. So this is where the hallway is. I just wanted to mark it out so I knew. I want to have it come out through there. I may have to move that, but I think we should be able to aim for that spot right there. And that's the one that'll go over to storage. And then I have this one right here. This is where I need to plug up the 240 for the rubber concrete. So let's do some load balancing. So I've got it coming over here to just a normal splitter. Because I think we should be able to work with just that. So I've got 405 coming in and I need to make 240. So I need to have 240 going one way and 165 going another. If you're wondering, how am I going to do that? It's because 4 or 5 isn't as bad of a number as you think. So 4 or 5 divided by 3, 135. Still doesn't look great. But if we divide that again by 3, we've got 45. So if we can split this into 9, it's fairly manageable. So I'm going to need to split this into thirds. So I'm going to put one splitter here because we're going to need to split at least one more of them into more thirds. But I can go ahead and add a merger here. So if we split the 405 into thirds, we've got 135, 135, and let's add one more merger over here, 135. So if I take this one, and I'm going to split this three more times, let's go ahead and add a merger facing to the left. And actually, let's move that one over to here. So that's 135 there. So, all right, so this one has 135 coming in. So if we split that three more times, here's 45, here's 45. And then right here, we're gonna add another splitter. So there's 45. So now if I split 45 three ways, I'll have 15. So we can take 15 there, 15. Oh, let's switch this have this face backwards. Alright, so mark 3 for that one, because that's 135. There's 15. There's 15. And there's 15. So 15 and 45. We just need to mark 1. So there's 60. So, into here, if we did this right, we've got 60 from the left belt. The center belt is 45. And then the belt coming in from the right is 135 and there's our 240 so we just need a mark 3 and we can go ahead and just bring that over into there 
And the reason I left it like that is all of these are coming from this direction. And I need four belts of 300 for the limestone. That means I need that limestone, this limestone, there's a one behind this big rock, and then there's one more, I think, over there. So I'm going to use the four closest limestones to feed this and create more concrete. So thankfully, I'll be creating more than what my setup is making right now. So that's the next step. I need to go ahead and just mass delete all of this, and I need to get started on that last belt bus. I'll show you a brief snippet of what building one of these looks like. I found this little guy over there because I went ahead and added a second story because I needed to get a little bit more of this part done and I needed to figure out what I was going to do with this space because I'm not going to be able to put a floor right on top and build factories like I am with any of the other floors with factories because I needed to use this space for some sinks and the dimensional depots is kind of how I had this whole storage section planned so really this is taking up two floors. So I added a hallway, but I changed the lighting, which I think I'll do in a couple different places. This is gonna get quite a bit bigger. But I brought him over. I think I saw a slug, and then there was a Mercer sphere, and then I saw him. So, and then I just built some foundations over. And I definitely want to change this. I'm not gonna leave it as chain link fences, but I don't, I don't want him falling off. He might hurt himself. So we've got the power switch over here, and I've got a light switch so that I can control everything from this section right here. I figured this would be a cool control room. So obviously not done. We've got a lot of decorating left to do in this place, but there's just a ton of work to do in general. So let me give you a quick tour of what I've done. So this right here is the storage blueprints and we've got a bunch of them merged together. So right now, the way I have, the way the storage is, I just kind of went down the list and I went kind of most important things. So concrete is the very first one. And then I went like iron plates, iron rods, and a bunch of other things on this side. This one right here is where the rubber will be coming in. Don't actually remember which one it is. There we go, this one. So this one right here is the rubber. That one over there is for the concrete. So once they fill up all of the storage containers, then the sinks will kick on. And that way the whole thing can stay running. This is what I did for the concrete. So I want at least two. Chances are in the future we'll even upgrade this more. This way I can have two dimensional depots uploading all of my concrete, whereas for everything else, I think one will probably be fine. So I've got the initial storage container. So this is kind of like my emergency buffer. So this will always be able to, I'll have to come here, obviously to my central storage to access it but I'll always have one storage container kind of as a backup for any of the materials. And then the other three will all feed the dimensional depot and my backup one. So this is where that gets fed. So that way for the items like computers and stuff like that, that I won't be making at a huge rate, but I'll always have a huge amount in backup so that when I do use it, it'll refill the dimensional depot nice and quick. And I just, just decided to use gate holes because I thought that would be a little bit more fun and let in kind of more of the light and whatnot since I'm just gonna use glass ceiling so that I can walk across this part and see everything kind of being loaded into my dimensional depots. So I just added more hallways, although I have no idea what's going where on the second floor because I still have a ton of work to do on the first floor, but I needed to figure out where the power switch for this whole thing was gonna go. So that's why I added this whole space and all of the hallways are just stacked right on top of where the hallways were before. Since they're blueprints, they obviously just snap to each other really easily. So that was actually pretty quick to do. This is where the rubber is going to come up and then head over into the storage area. And then same thing with the concrete. The one line of concrete, when I'm ready, I'll plug that up. Because I think for right now, I don't have it quite plugged up. I'm just going to have them go into the sink. That way I can make sure everything's running. And once it is, then I'll just delete this one and send it that way. And then I made this blueprint. So I thought this was kind of a fun way to light up the space instead of adding tons of lights. We'll see how much lights lag out the game. So I may end up having to switch to signs, but 
it would be nice if these worked well for me. So it's pretty simple, just using big metal pillars and then a frame pillar so I could see where all the cables are, mainly so I could remember where. The easiest way to deal with this is you can't actually connect that connection. It, it looks like you should because you can see through it, but you can't access anything inside. So to access it, you actually have to delete the bottom one and then I can use it. So I delete that one and then I'll delete kind of whichever other one that I need. Place another one there. I actually think I would like it to not look so weird coming straight out of there. So we'll do that instead. And then you just replace the pillars. But they should help light up the room. All right, so we've got the rest of the limestone finally belted up. So we've got our last belt bus here. I haven't added the signs because I haven't actually built it up everything yet, so I don't know where everything is. Although I should probably just start that little section so that I do know what's what. This right here is the sand ore, so there's already ore on that belt. Same with the sulfur. And I think I want to switch away from using as many power towers. I'm using them to get up and down my factory right now because they're just so useful for that with this being so big. But I want to use the train network for a lot of my powers since I'm only going to use one power grid in this playthrough instead of the two like I had before. The disadvantage is I don't get to keep my power graph as a nice clean steady line like I did last time and I just loved. But turning down all that power from the alien augmenters just isn't worth it to me so the advantage is I can try to keep my power a little bit cleaner. So I ran the power along my belt bus and then I added signs so hopefully I don't forget and don't accidentally use the wrong connections because I had to wire that all the way over to that priority power switch on the second floor. All the rest of the wall outlets are all of this internal power network. So the train is running and it is sinking right now. And then I added a whole bunch more storage containers. This is just tons of materials that were left over from me deleting a bunch of the temporary factories. I deleted the black powder setup I had over there and a bunch of the other ones so that I could connect them to this bus. So the only things that aren't hooked up are the ones that I'm still using. So iron plates and the steel production and all of these things are going to be some of the last ones to turn off just because I want to have as much available. The last thing I want to do is actually run out of the, one of these parts until I get its replacement part of the factory up and running. So that's why we're starting with concrete. Well, I think it's about that time. Instead of starting with the priority power switch, we are going to come over to here to the train station. The limestone's coming from four different nodes which are scattered all over the place and quite a bit different in lengths and so lengths of time to get to the part of the factory. The rubber, however, is coming all on one belt. And because each machine needs 20 per minute, rubber stacks to 200, meaning once it starts getting to the machines, I still have 10 minutes before those will completely back up and then start backing up this line. So I'm going to connect this first and then I'm going to turn on the entire factory which will then turn on just the miners that I've connected, which is just the limestone ones for now, and all the machines. So let's delete and connect this. We'll start the stopwatch and we'll head on over to the factory. Now that the rubber is just about in the factory, instead of going all the way upstairs, let's just throw down a priority power switch here come over to the priority. Let's go ahead and move home base over to priority group two. Let's turn it on. Look at all that concrete. Heck yeah. Well, obviously the longest part is really just the travel time from the miner to the factory. And that's okay. I knew that was gonna be a thing when I built a ridiculous large factory and pooled all the resources from the biome. That's just gonna happen for some of these. But all in all, a ridiculously quick startup time because of the load balancing and since the systems are broken up so much, 
I only really needed to load balance the rubber across all 12 machines. Whereas the limestone, it's just one belt into one splitter into the three machines. So about as easy as it gets, to be honest. But I now have 1,080 concrete, all being sunk. But that is a good amount of concrete, and I've got room to expand because, well, concrete's just one of those things. I wouldn't be surprised if I need more space in here later. I definitely need to mess around with the intensity of the lights. One of the things I've noticed is when you turn on lights, a lot of the time you have to go back to the light control panel and either turn it off or on or turn night mode on and off to get the settings to kind of reapply to all the new things that you've plugged up because I definitely turned the intensity down, but it sure doesn't look like it. it looks like I installed a mini sun in here. Tons of more factories to build, even just on this first level before I can start getting to more complicated parts. I've got to knock out all of the ingots and that sort of a thing, and then we can move up. But now that I have pretty much all of this biome's resources all gathered at this factory, all these next videos are going to be so much easier and I can focus and spend a lot more time on the actual building of the factory and the load balancing that I'm going to have to do downstairs. So the next project is going to be making 4,800 iron ingots. So look forward to that, and thanks for watching.